This isn't the same day, I promise. Illustrations by Pete. So today we're going to do an abstract of this guy. This is a peregrine falcon, and uh, we're going to use a reference photo, not this one. Maybe one that I took. We'll see how good it comes out. And then we'll do the abstract version of what that is and how I butchered that. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so I was very distracted because there were a, just a mass amount of people, crowds everywhere, and they were walking past all these birds, and I'm trying to record and not look too out of place as a middle-aged man vlogging in a bird sanctuary. But And by a mass amount of people, I mean like maybe a grandmother with her granddaughter walking in a stroller. It doesn't matter. The point is I was trying to get every, out of everyone's way, and so I did that very quick in the beginning. I'm going to say something that's shocking to you. I really enjoyed this drawing. It was fun. I liked it. The thing that I really liked about it, though, honestly, was that it was so simple, and yet I just, I liked to look at it. it. It was interesting to me. It was intriguing. And where my mind went while I was drawing is not where I intended to go. I intended for this to be more, um, I don't know, more focused on the bird, but it ended up, I started to do that a little bit with the wings and the pattern of the wing, and then went into this whole, ended up being some kind of falcon jellyfish thing. It will, you'll see when you get to the end here, but it was a fun video. And here's the thing, I really enjoy working with water-soluble ink. In fountain pens, most fountain pen ink is water-soluble, just most of it is. Some of it isn't, and like that carbon black, that's not. And so I use that a lot if I'm gonna go over it with watercolor or something like that. But for this, when you use the water-soluble ink, this is the Diamine Twilight ink, and it's just a beautiful color because it almost looks black when you're drawing with it until you add a little bit of water and then you get this beautiful, like, deep, misty blue color. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. So that's what I did here. And drawing, if you've never drawn with water soluble ink before and then added a little bit of water to give it some color, it just, I highly recommend it. It's, it's very satisfying. It's nice to add, even if you're drawing um, just doing like a toned drawing. So you do the drawing and then you just add some shadows in. Just something like that. It's just very satisfying. I really enjoy that. Sometimes I'll do landscapes like that, like quick sketches of a landscape and then just add a little bit of water maybe around the rocks and things and, and it just brings out that shadow and then you still preserve the highlight. It looks very nice. So you can mix it too. You can add other things if you want to add a little bit of watercolor to it or whatever. Just don't contaminate your watercolor pans with ink on the brush. Don't do that because you, you just don't want to do that. But this it's, it's really a fun exercise. I highly recommend trying it. And um, this one was different. I didn't want to make it too busy. I wanted to make, keep it very simple. I wanted to make very simple shapes and patterns. I didn't do a whole lot of lines in there, except in the center section you'll see some lines being drawn, but, but really it was just trying to do basic shapes and add some shadow sections and try and get that to blend really nicely. Now I'm also using the Arches Hot Press. That's what I'm using, the paper that I'm using here. And in, the paper is really good for watercolor. It lifts really nicely. It handles scrubbing. Here's the thing. When you use a fountain pen, I'm very heavy-handed. So I scratch the paper, especially when I'm trying to darken in an area. I go pretty heavy on that. I try not to, but I just I grip the pen like I'm holding on to it for my life. Like it, I have to hold it or I will die. And that's how I hold it. And then I just scribble away. Sometimes it's a little bit stiff. So I wanted to use a paper that was going to hold up to some scrubbing and some just some damage. And the arches is pretty good. It, it holds up pretty well. I know a lot of people, either they like it or they hate it or love it or they hate it. There's no in between. There's no, yeah, it's okay. There's no one who really says that except maybe me. For me, it's not the best watercolor paper that I've ever used. But it's also very, very far from the worst. It's it's probably towards the top end, 
but it's usually not my preference. I usually don't grab this when I go to do so, and mainly because the color of it is a little bit off-white. And I like a stark white when I'm trying to put something down. Either that or a completely toned color. But I don't like that off-white because if I'm trying to get contrast and trying to leave some areas white like I did in this one, it kind of messes with me a little bit. I've got to edit that into the photo then because then when I take the picture, I've got to just make that white just a little bit brighter so that it looks more white and a little bit less cream colored. I just... That's just something that personally I don't like, but I have noticed the slight side rant here. I've noticed recently, I I like warmer colors all of a sudden for certain things. Now, definitely not with blues. Blues, I like a cool blue or a true blue. I do not like a reddish blue. Like an ultramarine is probably my least favorite blue color in the world. I know a lot of people love that color. It's like a staple on everyone's palette. I don't. I used the uh, Daniel Smith French Ultramarine for a long time, and that is even more red in it. It was, and I used it, and I just couldn't. I didn't like what I was doing, and then I realized I just don't like this color. So anything I'm doing with this color is just not for me. So I went back to like the Thalo Green shade, which is much cooler and much more of a truer blue. And then I also love the Mayan Blue Genuine and the Cerulean Blue Chromium from Daniel Smith. Those are much greener type blues or cooler blues than they are red. They're definitely not reddish blues. But when I'm looking at other, like I like, when I look at, okay, let's talk about a robin. If you ever see a robin, the breast of the robin is this bright orange color. I like the ones that are a little bit more tanned, a little bit toned down, more muted, but warm. Not necessarily, there's some that just have a gray chest, not necessarily those. Although, the mockingbird is my favorite songbird, and it's got this cool gray color with the black and white stripes high contrast on the wings when it flies you can spot it from a mile away because you could just see that contrast in the wings beautiful color and i like to listen to them because they sing 37 different songs and it plays very nicely with my add so that's wonderful for me because it'll start singing one song and then switch to another and switch to another and i have forget so it's like oh yeah there's a new song oh there's a new song and i just like listening to that bird I'm getting way off topic, but at the same time, possibly staying on the same topic, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. Something happens when you are involved with like TikTok versus YouTube. If you watch a YouTube video and it ends and you're, you were really into it, you're like, oh, I wish it could go on a little bit more. Like it, it needs to go on a little bit more because I was really into that information or really enjoying what that person was doing or that painting that was being done or whatever, the way they were explaining something, whatever the case is on YouTube, that's how it goes. But when it comes to TikTok, it's just, I, if they don't get to the point in 10 seconds, I've got to switch off. If it's okay, I know that they're setting up a trick shot. If they don't get onto the trick shot within the next like five seconds, I'm out of here. I just, I don't have time to sit here and watch every little try and, and fail and just do it already. Let me see it and have it be done. And I don't like that mentality. So I am completely off of TikTok. I cannot stand that I get like that because that's not me at all. I don't have that short attention span on that particular subject. If I get into something, I want to get into it. And that's just if, but something happens when you're on that platform, it's very different. And I think that's why a lot of people can't switch over. A lot of people that are on TikTok trying to do YouTube or on YouTube and they try to go to TikTok and it just doesn't work because you have different, it's a different platform. It's a completely different mindset of the people that are looking at it and watching it. And YouTube tries to do those shorts. Listen, unless I enjoy like the speed painting shorts where it's just a minute long. They go from beginning to end. You can see all the different levels and development. That stuff I don't mind watching. But anything else just drives me nuts. I just, it's on YouTube. This is not the place for that. So... That's just a personal thing. That's my side rant. That was like a 10-minute side rant. I apologize. But 
That's just how I feel about it. I probably mentioned that in another video and just forget that I've mentioned that, but I wanted to bring that up. So, like I was saying, I have, I just, some of the warmer colors I'm really starting to gravitate towards. Like some of the dark, like pearly maroons, and, and I've always liked the pearly maroon, but I just, and I like the muted colors. That's a thing for me. I don't care what palette I'm looking at, a cool or a warm palette or whatever. It's got to be the muted colors. I'm really into that. The bright, like oranges and things like that, that doesn't do it for me. But if you have a completely muted palette and then you put a bright orange in it, Sometimes that is nice and exciting and kind of spruces up the painting a little bit and gets that little bit extra in there. But even yellows, I used to always get the lemon yellow or the Hansa yellow light or something very bright yellow. And then I realized I never use it. I don't even like that color. I would prefer something a little bit with a slight orange tint to it or a slight brownish tint to it, like a... Nicolazzo yellow it has that little bit of brownish to it or like a new gamboge has that orange to it that's the kind of colors that I like just a little bit more muted and that's just something that has happened recently probably within the last year I've really gravitated towards that kind of thing okay now I don't care if you're looking at uh, if you're a YouTube creator or if you're an artist we're gonna talk about artists here because that's what we're doing here but if you've ever heard, it's the same advice. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It could be music, it could be anything, whatever it is. They always say, get your first hundred crappy drawings or paintings done first, and then you can really start to paint and draw. And I just don't see that. So I've done over a hundred videos now, and I just am gonna do another hundred crappy videos. That's just what I'm gonna do. I really haven't changed much. Maybe a little, and I, maybe I have a little bit. I think my attitude in front of the camera has changed a little bit because I've gotten more comfortable, that kind of stuff. But my art is just my art. It's the same thing. Sometimes it, it's terrible, and sometimes I really like it. This one I really liked. This was a weird, I don't even know what this is, but it's a weird thing. It's the most dangerous creature that has ever existed. It is a falcon jellyfish and it's poisonous so you are going to just get stung if it flies over to you it's it's the worst thing you can, if you ever see this thing coming you better run it almost looks i i don't know idea but anyway i think the advice of, of doing something 100 is just to get you to do it i agree with the advice okay i understand what they're trying to tell you to do is just get started. Make your first, don't worry about if they're good, just make your first hundred crappy ones. The thing is, they don't ever tell you where to move on from there. And so I'm just gonna make another hundred crappy drawings and another hundred crappy videos. And we'll see if people hang around for it. I'm hoping that they do. But you know, if they don't, I understand you sometimes you're just going through, you're like, oh, the, this thing again? Okay, I understand, but you know, you did that a year ago. Maybe you should change it up a little bit. I try and change it up for you. I try and keep it a little bit interesting and do something different a little bit. But really, from experience, I have watched YouTube channels where they do the same thing in almost every video. It's not the exact same thing. You know what I mean? It's the same type of thing. It's the same type of painting. They're painting landscapes and it's the same one over. Look at Bob Ross. He did landscapes. That's what he did. And it was landscape in every single one. He had happy little trees and he had clouds. And they, but it would, didn't matter. People tuned in to see the same thing over and over and over because it was Bob Ross and you can just like watching him is like taking a Valium. It's just nice and relaxing. You can calm down. You can forget about things for a little bit. And that's really what this is all about. So I will probably just continue to do these things. Some of you will continue to watch me and some of you will not. And I get it. I understand. I appreciate all of you, no matter whether you leave me for like a newer model or something. I get that. That's fine. Just, I appreciate you for who you are. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the important part.
Now I do have to apologize if you had a think at the beginning of the video. I don't know if it's happening the whole time. I've got to go back and look at it. When I look at it at regular speed, I don't see it, but it, when it's sped up, I see these constant lines moving. It's the exposure in the camera. I have to lock that off. I don't know how to do that yet. I it just really um like I said, I'm just like a monkey with a stick when I held the camera. So I've got to figure some things out and get that to stop having that rolling light because there's no fluorescent lights in here. It's not like it's that kind of thing where you got to match the thing. It's not that. These are LED lights. They are usually normally fine, but in this video, for some reason, I did something. I changed the setting or messed with something, and this is what happens. I, I mess things up all the time. That's just what happens. I'll try and fix that in the next one. Now, some of you who didn't notice that, and you probably have no idea, you're going to go back and look at that and be like, oh, yeah, that's really annoying. But I, you didn't even notice it when you were watching it, but that's okay. Just don't worry about it. I'll get it all taken care of. Now, I also want to mention this pen that I'm using. It has remained my favorite pen now for some time. It's the Moonman T1. This is a weird thing. I went to look for another one of those pens. I can't find Moonman anymore. At least on Amazon, it's not called Moonman. It might, like Jet Pens or something like that, you can find the Moonman. But it's called something else now. It's like a different company. And I don't know if it says Moonman on it still, but that this pen is has been my favorite. It's a large demonstrator. It holds a ton of ink, so I can just draw forever. And I think I have, have not put more ink in this pen, probably in at least six months. I've just been writing with it off and on, and just, it's still like halfway full. It's just, it's a great pen. I love this thing. The nib is a little bit wider, so it's, you can still get some fine lines you'll see in here, but, that really it just it lays down thicker lines if I want or it's just it's a nice pen it's not real flexible but it does have some variation you can get some variation out of it but I really like it it's very satisfying to write with it glides on the paper a lot smoother it doesn't scratch the paper as much like some of the finer tips do and I hate scratching paper when I draw there's one thing that I hate. It's why I don't use the Rotring Isograph so much is because they scratch the paper. And it's because I have a heavy hand. If you go glide very gently, they won't. But I just have that heavy hand and I always scratch the paper and I, I just can't use them for that reason. So I usually use the felt tip because I know I won't scratch the paper. But when I use the, this pen in particular, this fountain pen, it definitely no problem at all. Now I love fountain pens, so I have a bunch of them and I use them off and on all the time. This has just remained my favorite ever since I got it. It was like one of the first ones I got. I think the Black Forest was the first one that I got. And then this one, it was the, I think it was called the Hangdian Black Forest. And then this one was the second one I've, I bought and I loved it ever since. It's just been my favorite pen. So now this is like a long form version of a TikTok video, but it's the same thing that you're watching, the same picture I'm drawing, and yet I've hit about 50 different topics, and that's my version of what that should be. So now you compare these two side by side, how do they look? Thumbs up the video if you think this is the most terrifying creature that you would ever want to see out in the wilderness somewhere while you're stranded and you can't get to a payphone. Do they still have payphones? You can't get to your, your cell phone is dead. Just forget that I said anything about a payphone. That's just, that was some old guy who broke in here said that, but you just, your cell phone is dead and you don't want to see this thing and not be able to call someone for the antidote. So I hope they catch that guy that breaking into people's homes talking about payphones. It should be illegal. Well, that's about it for me. I'm going to go, and I'll see you in the next one.